who would you say was your favorite uh, training partner that you've or uh, other powerlifter that you've trained with? Oh, I've had a lot of training partners over the years. I trained in my own gym. Uh, in the early years, I owned a gym in Madison, Wisconsin, when I was at the university there. Uh, and uh, I had a lot of good training partners back in those days. Uh, but uh, it wasn't until I moved to California. And, and then right after Wisconsin, I had uh, my own gym in New Orleans. I lived down in New Orleans. I went down there to, to act as strength coach for the New Orleans Saints. And then they had a coaching change, and I was out of a job as quickly as I had the job. So I was stuck in New Orleans with nothing to do. So I opened up a gym, and uh, I had a lot of elite athletes showing up there. You know, a lot of guys from the Saints came there, including Archie Manning. You know, that was before the days of Peyton. Right. <laughs> Eli, you know. But, um, uh, and uh, my training partner there was a guy by the name of Randy Wilson. Randy was uh, a national champ in the 275 pound class. And uh, he was a great training partner. But it wasn't until I moved to California that I had my own home gym. There I was able to train anytime I wanted to, uh, with whomever I wanted to. And I had uh, two or three training partners that were that stuck with me through thick and thin. One of them was a guy by the name of Pax Lemon. Now, he was never a competitive powerlifter, but he weighed almost 400 pounds. And he could really move some iron, that guy. He just never got into lifting. And uh, Pax and I, to this day, are, are close friends. And if you can believe this, he's racing automobiles now. <laughs> he, he, he drives a Alfa Romeo in the, S, the SCCA. And he's not as big as he used to be, but he's still up near three-something, you know. <laughs> imagine a guy like that. He had to shoehorn himself into a car that small. Yeah, I yeah. can imagine. <laughs> So, I was uh, that I had. Partners. Oh, what were you saying? Sorry. I was fortunate in that I had really good training partners over my whole career. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and then just two more questions, real quick. Um, how do you feel the sport of powerlifting? Oh, before you forget, for, oh. for, you know, let me just say this because I didn't really mention it, and I and I should have. I believe that having a good training partner is the single most important thing that you can do as a powerlifter in training. Be careful about choosing your training partners. Now, how how what would you say is like three good uh, keys uh, in a po uh, training partner? You know, and how to find one. You have to be on the same page, science wise, okay. spotting wise, and so forth. Uh, you uh, you're much better off if you. If you train with a man who, or a woman who has the same level of knowledge as you, even if it means sitting them down and schooling them yourself, which I have always had to do, so that we, you know, that we were, you know, we were speaking the same language. Um, and uh, just as importantly, an athlete uh, who, or a training partner who has um, a free enough schedule where you're able to train together. Uh, at any time of day or night, uh, you know, and, and I've even gone so far as to train twice and three times a day at one point in my career, you know, accomplishing just one exercise and then coming back two, three hours later and doing another exercise and so forth. I found it to be a very effective way of optimizing the amount of weight I was able to move. That, that, those are some really good points. Uh, because uh, I think a lot of people have trouble uh, finding a good training partner. Yeah, yeah, it's very important. Very important. Um, but how do you feel powerlifting is progressing, and uh, do you think it's going in a good direction or uh, a bad direction? I'm heartbroken over the direction powerlifting has taken. I know I get, I get a lot of flack from the current powerlifters nowadays, for saying this, and they think that I'm being a crotchety old man and, and trying to protect my own records. If you think that of me, if you think that I'm that small, you, you know, you're, you're sadly mistaken. I couldn't care less about records. I love it when, a, when, a, when an athlete is able to overcome all obstacles and break world records. 
It's wonderful to me that he should do so, even if it means my records should fall. But the way they're doing it nowadays is ludicrous, it's outrageous, and it makes a mockery of the sport. It looks like a circus event nowadays with the gear that they're wearing. I can't stand it. It, it hurts me. And uh, what, what about the gear? The gear is what's allowing them to lift all that weight. The clothes that they wear is like armor, for heaven's sakes. And uh, it allows them to lift, you know, 10%, 20% more than they could not wearing the gear. That's outrageous. You know, and they say, well, Fred, you know, they have fiberglass poles now. Back in your day, they used a steel pole. You know, what do you got to say about that? And I said, all right, they changed the sport. Now they have a fiberglass pole. You can't compare the uh, pole vaulters of today with the pole vaulters in the day of, uh, of uh, Don Bragg, for example, who went well over 15 feet in the steel pole. You know, and I understand that, and so does the rest of the world. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Uh, I've noticed that, that, uh, cause what is it at now? Three ply or? Oh, I don't know. I don't keep right. <laughs> you know, I stay as far away from that nonsense as I can. I took one look at it and I said, I want nothing to do with this. Um, and that so, was the sport that I loved. Yeah. You know, and that sport is gone. Right. Yeah. That's a bummer. Um, and then the last question is, uh, what are you up to now? How, uh, what's, what's Fred doing now? Um, I'm retired, pretty much. I, I still do some ISSA things. I, you, you, you're aware that I, that I was the co-founder of the International Sports Sciences Association. Yep. We were the first organization ever to offer certification as a personal fitness trainer. And nowadays, we've grown and grown and grown to the point now where uh, we offer uh, accredited courses where people can take our courses for college credit. In fact, sometime in the near future, don't be surprised if we come out with our, our own two-year degree program, which is going to happen. And so I, I'm busy doing some of that stuff. Uh, and uh, But generally speaking, I'm retired. Uh, I just, over the past two years, uh, have been battling cancer. I had prostate cancer, but I am now cancer-free. Wow, I that's awesome. I have a report, uh, and I had, I had to go undergo some radiation treatment that really, really took me down. It took me down, man. I tell you, uh, uh, you know, I, I developed radiation proctitis, and part of that involves a demineralization of, of the pelvic bone, and it's split in, in three different sections. My pelvis did. And so I've been in a wheelchair for a long, long time, and I'm just now uh, able to get up out of the wheelchair and walk around on the cane. So I'm making a, I'm making a comeback. Don't be surprised if you see me in a three-ply suit. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, cool. Well, uh, thank you so much. Oh, I'm retired, and I, and I spend a lot of time on my boat when I'm able. Oh, nice. Yes, there's some pictures of that. All right. Well, thank you so much, Fred, for uh, giving us your time. And uh, thank you for tuning in, uh, Mass Muscle TV. Uh, thank you for watching, and see you later. Anytime.